Elon Musk. No matter what your opinion is of the guy, you can't deny that he is a very productive man. In fact, many people see him as the pinnacle of human efficiency. And I decided to live like him for a whole year. For those of you that are new, I'm Dr. Justin Sung, a former medical doctor and now full-time learning coach. Back in 2015, I was living in another city for a clinical placement and I had a lot on my plate. I was starting up a new nonprofit social enterprise, helping people into medical school. I was spending most of my days in clinical placements at the hospital, like a full-time job. I was coming home to study. I was trying to gym three to four times per week. I was tutoring students back when I still used to tutor subjects in you know, a 10 to 20 hours per week. And I wanted to maintain some kind of social life as well as obviously, you know, like cooking, cleaning, laundry, doing the dishes, all that sort of stuff. So there were a lot of things that I was trying to balance and my learning and productivity systems were not nearly as refined as they are now. I was still having to study uh, at least sort of 10 hours per week at that time. My learning efficiency was only around probably 50% of what it is now. And so there were still a lot of those sort of daily grind kind of struggles that I was trying to manage. At the time, Elon Musk was reported to be working 16 hours a day and sleeping six hours a night. Uh, and I was already doing that, not because of Elon Musk, but because I just happened to already be doing that. If you are interested in seeing a video about what it was like to work 100 hours a week, every week for five years, let me know in the comments. Uh, but one thing that he was doing that I wasn't doing was that he was scheduling his day into five minute blocks. And this is something that's called time blocking. And it's a widely accepted form of time management where you divide your day into these discrete blocks and then you assign a task to each block. So this is something that I was already familiar with. Time blocking was very, you know, it's, a, it's still a very common and popular technique. Um, and I was scheduling my day into sort of 15 minute blocks or 30 minute blocks, but never less than 15 minutes. So five minutes was extreme. And I, I don't think anyone had ever heard of someone time blocking the day into, into five minute blocks before. But hey, if it's good enough for Elon, it's good enough for me. So I decided to use a five minute time block every single day. And I did that every day for an entire year. Let me tell you, it did not go as expected. But before I jump into what I learned from this experience, I would appreciate if you give a like for the algorithm and a subscribe if you haven't already. I know that most of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So if you like my content, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. So back to time blocking. One thing that people often misunderstand about time blocking is that just because you block time in a certain increment, for example, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, it doesn't mean that you have to finish whatever task that you set within that time. So I could set three 20 minute blocks back to back to create a one hour study session. The idea is that it's just making you more attentive about how you're spending your time and more intentional about the tasks that you're doing instead of just this endless continuum of time where you sort of just wake up and you exist for a day and then you just go to sleep. So even though I time blocked five minute intervals, I could still do a task for more than five minutes. I would just be more aware of how many blocks of time were passing that I was needing to invest in doing that. So for example, I could schedule, you know, uh, 12 time blocks to create the one hour session. It's just that now I'm aware that it's costing me sort of 12 units of time blocks. So let me start with the good parts of doing something like this. Number one, it really made me super aware of wasted time. And this is probably one of the biggest benefits that I took away and continue to benefit from to this day. There's two types of time that you can invest. One is time that you invest intentionally. So for example, I'm intending to study or I'm intending to watch YouTube. Uh, and then there is time that is spent unintentionally. So this is where you say, I intend to study, but then you end up watching YouTube or you spend 10 minutes scrolling through Instagram. It may not seem like those little parts of unintentionally spent time make a big difference, uh, or maybe you already realize that you waste away your entire life by doing that. Uh, but for me, I, I didn't consider myself as someone that was easily distracted or that um, really wasted a lot of time doing that. But even for me, I found that I was consistently wasting at least an hour a day on unintentional activities and tasks. It doesn't mean that I couldn't watch Netflix or watch YouTube or, or, you know, just scroll Instagram or just relax. Like I could do that. I just needed to make sure that that was an intention, no thing that I did. Like I would say, okay, here's 10 minutes for me to check my messages and my DMs or, you know, watch, you know, something on YouTube. So even now I am very aware of how I'm spending my time and trying to make sure that I'm always intentional with my time, whether it's working or whether it's relaxing. The second thing 
that was quite good was that it made me aware of how I could chain tasks together to leverage the state of mind that I was in more efficiently. And let me explain that because that's just a confusing sentence. For example, if I'm spending 10 blocks of time, so 50 minutes writing an essay, and then immediately afterwards, I'm transitioning to studying a lecture for chemistry. I'm probably not gonna be able to perform very well in that next block because I'll just be too tired. So I could do it, like I could spend that next block studying chemistry, but my efficiency would suffer because I would be too tired. Or for example, after I have dinner, and if the next block is about watching a, an online video lesson, then I might fall asleep because I just get sleepy after I eat. So instead, I should be scheduling in a task that is easier for me to engage with and keep my mind active. So maybe it's about you know something, something like planning uh, for my next day or you know planning for an assignment that I have to do, something that operates at a higher level. Or maybe I'd go and spend that time to exercise or stretch or something else entirely. And so to this day, planning my day based on what next task is going to best utilize the state of mind my brain is gonna be most efficient in is something that is still very helpful because we're not always good at doing every single task to the same level of efficiency at the same time every single day. There is a difference that each task can influence your state of mind, which can influence how efficient it's going to be at another task. And chaining these together in sort of like a, a chain of efficiency allows me to be sort of at my best whenever I'm doing every single task. And the third thing was that it got me really good at micromanaging and adjusting my schedule on the fly. One of the biggest problems that I found over the years that students face, not just students, but just uh, you know learners and people of all levels, is that they get very easily derailed when something doesn't go according to schedule. And you know they have a perfect schedule that's already set and then something goes wrong and they sort of just like, like flail around and they, they can sometimes just give up for the rest of the day. Psychologically, this is not a good thing because if this happens enough times, it can actually put you off just the whole concept of scheduling entirely. And you can start having these beliefs about yourself, like scheduling just doesn't work for me or it's, it's just not good for me. So this is not something that is a, uh, you know, a positive self-belief. And it's, it's usually not really accurate either. It's usually just about your skills. But when you are blocking your day into five minute increments, you are constantly getting derailed by literally anything. You are having to ride over that and manage that and adjust accordingly five to 10 times every single day. Now, the way that I teach time management is to just avoid those derailments by sort of protecting your time with various other techniques, uh, which is a hundred times better to just not get derailed in the first place, but it's still inevitable. It's still inevitable that you're going to be derailed at some point and knowing that you do have the skill to adjust to it, react to it, you know, and, and change things and modify your plans on the fly gives you a lot of confidence as well as helping with your productivity. And that's about it for the good things because other than that, it was frankly a pretty terrible experience. Probably because this whole five minute time blocking thing is completely fake. Uh, apparently in 2018, Elon Musk uh, took to Twitter to say, this is not true. Uh, it's just like a rumor, it's just a myth uh, that some random person had just posted up and attributed to Elon. Um, except 2018 is a solid two years after I realized that it doesn't work. So, you know, thanks Elon for clearing that up. So why do I not recommend this to anyone else? Uh, so many reasons. Where to start? I was very stressed. It takes a lot out of you and it is very exhausting. I got used to it, but I got used to it kind of like how a soldier gets used to bombshells going off when they're in a war zone. You know that scene in the Avengers where Bruce Banner, you know, he says like, you know, the trick is that I'm always angry and then he turns into the Hulk and then power punches that like uh, alien worm whale thing. Well, the trick to never being stressed while blocking your day in five minute increments is to always be stressed. Does that make sense? It really shouldn't because it doesn't make sense. I was always stressed a little bit, not like just like ripping my hair out every single day, but there was always like an underlying tone of stress and impatient. And I was always really on edge. As you can imagine, when your day is dictated by a five minute timer. And on top of that, it makes you really annoyed at other people or just anything that can potentially derail you. And it makes you very impatient as well. 2015 is the year where I just slammed every single door, not because I was angry, which I kind of think I, I, I sort of was, but also because I never, it's really stupid now that I think about it at all, 
uh, is that like the, the idea of closing a door gently and then like, well, what if it doesn't close and then I have to double back and then I have to go in and then close it again. The, the time waste of that bothered me so much that I was like, nope, just gonna slam it every single time. Even in like social events, I would be out there with my friends and if they weren't like communicating to me in a way that was like efficient enough or concise enough, or if they were just talking too slowly, it would actually start to bother me. Even though I had blocked out like, you know, two hours of time to just chill out and, you know, hang with my friends. Like I just couldn't turn it off. I couldn't just relax because I was so wired into the passage of time. On the other hand, I did get freakishly good at guessing how much time had passed. And even to this day, I'm able to tell roughly how much time has passed to around one minute accuracy for any amount within one hour, which is really the stupidest, most useless superpower to have. Functionally zero benefit because I could instead, like I could literally just, you know, but all of the stress Maybe it could have been worth it if I was really productive and I got a lot done that year. And I mean, actually 2015 was a relatively successful year for me. Um, I had started my social enterprise. I raised over $35,000 in funds. I had, you know, been tutoring. I did end up going to the gym, you know, three to four times a week. I, I did manage to have a social life. I finished my medical studies with, you know, a few distinctions. So I did end up doing, you know, pretty well. I got all of those things and I balanced it, but uh, it's not quite that simple because I probably could have done just as well, maybe even better by using a more effective strategy. So there's this thing in medicine, which we call the decisional balance. And uh, we use it a lot for people that suffer from alcoholism or substance uh, dependency. And uh, it kind of goes like this. The simple version is that we ask them, you know, what are the good things that this provides for you? What are the bad things? And then is there a way to achieve the good things without the bad things? So for example, you know, for alcoholism, the good thing might be that it helps them to unwind and to socialize with their buddies. But the bad thing is that they're an ED and I'm seeing them for a head laceration and a broken finger and they're losing their memory. So the question is, can you unwind and socialize with your buddies without being hospitalized? This is a frame of mind that I take with me to learning and productivity all of the time. I'm always thinking about how can I achieve the good thing with minimal of the bad thing? It's not the best to just ask, is it working? Is this good? What's better is to ask, what is good and how much does it cost? And therefore, can we achieve the good with less cost? And so one of the things we're studying is that a lot of study techniques can work and that it can get you a result, but it's about the cost. Like how much time does it take? How much, you know, how enjoyable, like what's the experience? What is your performance? How consistent is the performance? You know, there's lots of these different variables that we can map out. I'm not gonna go into that too much right now. One of the things that this really extreme time blocking took away from was the focus on prioritization. And this is really the year where the importance of prioritization was made very, very clear to me. Time blocking is a method of time management. And for those of you going through my program, you know that I teach about time management versus task management. Those of you interested in my program, you can see the link in the description below. And time management is how you are scheduling your day. Like things like time blocking are a form of time management. It's how you're scheduling your day, how you're blocking out your time. Task management is about what you are doing in the time that you have blocked out what you're doing with that schedule. So you can have very good time management, but still be ultimately unproductive towards whatever goal that you have set. If what you are doing is actually not the best thing to get you towards your goal, right? So for example, if you have like three different tasks and one task gets you one step closer to your goal, another task gets you three steps closer and another task gets you five steps closer. If you do five things per day, but you're only doing things that are of like task one in type, then you're getting five steps closer to your goal. Whereas you might do two things in a day and those could be like task three that are getting you five steps closer. So every day you're 10 steps closer to your goal. So overall, who is being more productive? Well, person number one is doing more stuff. They're busier, but person number two is actually more productive if we are considering productivity as getting closer to the goal. And they're probably going to have a easier, less stressful, you know, just a more relaxed life while actually getting further ahead. So in my experience, and again, this, you know, 2015 year where I, I tried this really drove it into me was that task management is vastly, incomparably more important than time management. So much so that now 
me, the version of me right now, does not time block my day into five minutes, not even 10 minutes, not even 20 minutes, not even an hour. I use three hourly time blocks for my normal scheduling. My calendar went down from having 30 plus tasks and events scheduled into it to like three or four per day. Without a doubt, I am doing less now than I was before. I am less busy now than I was before. Instead, I now spend more time and I have dedicated time for very, very strict prioritization. I teach a full version of this prioritization framework in my program. And I also talk about a lot of the most important components in other videos. But the, the most important part here is that when you are strictly prioritizing, you are making sure that you very clearly understand what is it that is the most important thing for you to get done today. I spend much more time now figuring out what is important and then removing things that are not important from my day. And I legitimately am doing less per day now than I was doing back in 2015. And amazingly, counterintuitively, counter mathematically, almost impossibly, I am more productive. Some tasks allow you to spend less time on other tasks. Some tasks make other tasks unnecessary. I've said the word tasks so much, it's starting to lose meaning now. So the idea here is we're talking about leverage. We're talking about leverage. So for example, when it comes to studying, learning about studying makes your future studying more efficient. And it means that you have less to study in the future. Learning about time management means that future you doesn't have to spend time on catching up on tasks that you missed. The trick is to realize which tasks have a leverage effect on other tasks and to prioritize those as more important. Ultimately, we're giving the next week's version of you less things to worry about. You're putting yourself in a better position and these are the types of things that if you were to do, they affect the trajectory of your life. Not necessarily like a massive diversion suddenly, but incrementally they're affecting the trajectory of your life. So right now on top of making content for things like YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, which if you're not following me already, then you know, give me a follow. I'm also spending time to teach students that are on my course. I'm training my coaches and my other staff. I'm managing businesses full time. I recently finished my master of education and you know what else? I just finished clocking around 50 hours of this RPG that I've been playing. I just watched season three of Daredevil and the boys and I wake up every day like at 9 a.m. sometimes 10 a.m. if I had a late night. My overall productivity is now higher than it has ever been at any other point in my life. And I am less busy than I've ever been. Well, maybe not ever been. I'm sure I was less busy as like an infant, but as an adult, I've never been so not busy while at the same time, so massively productive. Every day I know that I am doing something that is changing the position that I am in next week, that is contributing towards building the trajectory of my life in the direction that I wanted to go. And the reason I'm able to do that is that I am ruthlessly strict in terms of what I do and do not spend time doing. That is about task prioritization and it makes a massive difference compared to time management, which has frankly pretty quickly diminishing returns once you are at a point where you are scheduling things and doing some basic time blocking, you're probably not going to find much more benefit for the amount of time and effort you invest in that in terms of your overall productivity. Once you're at that basic minimum level of time management, you're not going to get too much more benefit. If you're still at school, is that still possible for you? Yes and no. You can't be prioritizing things to the extent that I can, where I'm you know, in control of like my whole day, everything, especially because I'm not like employed by anyone but you can prioritize a lot more than you think. You can control your life and you know, even with school and homework and all the other things, you can control that much more than you think if you do start applying a more conscious and strict method of prioritizing your time into thinking, what can I do today that changes my position for future me? If you're already on my program and you've learned these methods, then leave a comment to let other people know about how you have found this kind of approach and the benefits that you've found from being more strict with your prioritization, especially if you're still in school. And if there are parts of this video that you want me to dive more deeply into, then also let me know in the comments. As always, if you like this, then I'd appreciate you hit the like and the subscribe, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.